You're now looking live over the Capitol in Washington. A bill aimed at a nationwide ban of TikTok heads to the Senate today. This after the House voted 352 to 65 to pass the bill. Now the ban could come if Chinese company ByteDance refuses to sell its stake in the company. Lawmakers on both sides caution how the Chinese government could gain access to Americans' TikTok data, which could threaten national security. Chief Legal Analyst Conleaf Rhodes joined us now to talk about the status of the bill and what it means if you have the app downloaded. You know, if this goes all the way through and it, they end up saying, okay, it's banned, what happens to people? What happens to their freedom of speech? Because they've been talking about that a lot. Well, there are legitimate national security concerns, so I'll start there. And I'm not a national security expert, but I can rest assured that the folks in D.C. that are getting the intel believe that if this app does not lose control from China, that it will be, continue to be a pending threat to national security. And so they move fast and swiftly. We haven't seen anything in our government that's been bipartisan, but this was a sweeping landslide. So everyone's on the same page. Only 65 um, House reps decided not to support this. Like 350 other ones were all in. President Biden has already said he's all in. In the Senate, I don't know. But regarding your question on the individual user, it, it's really not in their control. If the government it says that they they must divest and then bit um, and then TikTok decides not to divest, then they'll just be removed from the app store. Once an app is removed from the app store on the iPhone or Google, then now that device will not have access to download it and then they will remove it at some point. So that will be problematic for a user, but it's really not in their hands right now. It's in the government, in the company's hands. Do it's kind of a tug of war. They have any recourse? The they is in TikTok or the would, user? The user, because there are a lot of people, content creators and businesses that really rely on the traction. I think I'm right on the hills with that. TikTok said you'll lose, make 300 plus thousand people lose a job, mm -hmm. and then you'll have 170 million Americans that post on there every day lose access to their content. And so you've seen a lot of folks push back on that. Um, when they had this in committee, TikTok urge users to start calling their representatives and they flooded representatives and then folks were mad. They were like, hey, why are you having them call us? And so then TikTok hit them back and said, well, you don't want people to call you as their representative. So there's been this back and forth. Um, I think this is a, a major blow for First Amendment rights. And this is why in Montana, they passed a statewide ban mm -hmm. and a federal judge struck it down and said, listen, this is unconstitutional. He matter of fact, he said it violates the Constitution on multiple levels. The ACLU has jumped in and attempted to sue and said, listen, you're violating these folks' First Amendment rights. So I am right on that. This is a very weird place where the government has to show that there's a compelling interest to protect national security and people have to say, well, you're trampling on my rights. Typically, national security would overtake your rights, um, but that is a rare stance and this will be something that will get fought in court. And TikTok says they're here for the fight.